Hey guys, if you've been watching the news, you might have heard about this NAR settlement and the new changes that are happening when you're buying or selling a home. If you want to know more about that and how that affects you in your process of buying, selling, and financing your home, then you're going to want to stick around and watch this video. My name is Enrique, team leader, broker associate with PRG Real Estate at eXp. I have my business partner, co-founder, sales manager, <laughs> Jason Palomino. We've been partners for close to 20 years now. 20 years now. And then you also lead a mortgage division as yeah. well yeah. at Alliance Lending. Between us, like we got, you know, bring all that background of- Over 40 years. Over 40 years in the years. trenches. <laughs> 40 years, 40 trenches. years experience. This new NAR thing that we're gonna talk about it's a change in our business, right? Yeah. It's a change in how business is done. It's a change for buyers. It's a change for sellers. And so I want to unpack that a little bit so people know like, hey, how does this affect them? You hear yeah. all this stuff in the news. If you're watching the news or you're on social media, yeah. you've seen it. Now, how is it affecting our buyer, our seller? You know, how's it affecting when people are financing? So let's maybe start off with buyers, right? Yeah. Like, like what's what was the NAR change, right? What, yeah, I what mean, happened? first off, Enrique, you know what I want to say is that people are still buying and selling real estate, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're still there's still activity. There's still buyers. There's still people getting financing. It's it's business as usual. Yeah. Right. I think that we got to make sure that's very clear. Right. It, real estate hasn't stopped. Yeah. Now going into really what what changes are happening. How is it affecting the buyer? I would say you know one is just understanding and explaining to you guys the buyer that now it's the commissions have been separated. Yeah. Right. Commissions have been separated. You have to hire your real estate agent, your buyer's agent, and you're going to be responsible to go ahead and co uh, compensate that agent. Yeah. The list, you know, and I guess we could talk on the listing side, but that's that's as simple as you can you can yeah. make it. Right. So before the yeah. way it was done was if you wanted to sell your house, you would hire your listing agent. Yeah. They would charge you a commission. Yeah. And then they would share part of that commission with the buyer's agent. Yeah. Right. So let's say they were charging you five percent, six percent, four percent, whatever that might be. And then part of that was being shared with the the agent who brought the buyer. Yeah. Right. So it was all kind of commingled, right? Yeah. And so now with these new changes, they separated those two. Yep. Where now to sell your house, you have your own agent, you have your own agreement of how much they get paid. Yes. If you're a buyer, you have your own agent and you have your own agreement of how much they get paid. Yep. Right. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And then, so each party is responsible to pay their own their own agent, basically. Yeah. Right. That's the new way. Are there strategies and ways to get that covered in your offer and all that stuff? That's a that's we'll talk a little bit about. Yeah, that. Yeah, we can definitely talk but, about that. But yeah. To keep it real simple. Just separate. That's you got it. your agent for the buyer. The <laughs> seller has their agent. Now you're responsible for paying them. That's yeah. the simplest way I would say to explain. Let's talk about, you know, if you're a buyer, what can you expect when you're out there shopping for homes? I think, you know, the first thing is to understand that you have to have an agreement signed with your with an agent so that you can go ahead and view a property, a tour, right? To tour that property, you're going to have to have an agreement signed. So that that's another change that has happened, yeah. right? Before that you didn't have to have an agreement signed. Now, you know, the good thing is everything is negotiable. Right. So when you have your agent, they're going to go ahead and negotiate the best terms of uh, the best credits, concessions, and they're going to negotiate that with the seller and the listing agent. Yeah. Right. So I, I want us to understand that these things were still happening before before this before the NAR. Right. Yeah. Before this before this has changed. So I think it's it's again business as usual and understanding that everything is negotiable, but making sure that you have a strong agent that can negotiate on your behalf. We have to sign an agreement before you can show me the property. And the, on the agreement, it's going to say how much my compensation is. It's going to say that it's only for this particular property. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Right. So yeah. that's one form of the agreement that you may see out there yeah. when you're touring homes. The other form is going to be more of a standard agreement that has more of a longer term, a defined term yeah. and maybe a defined area or types of properties that you're looking for. And that's probably a common one that we're going to see out there as well. Yeah. So it could be, for example, hey, we're going to be working together for 90 days. This yeah. is my compensation and it's going to cover any properties that I show you within yeah. this county. Right. Yeah. And so those are the kind of two types that you're seeing. And, and the benefits, right? Let's talk yeah. about the benefits of each one. One is that you're only committed, if you sign the single property one, you're only committed to work with that agent on that particular property. Yeah. Now the benefits of working with, you know, let's say a, a 30 or 60 day is that you don't need to, you don't need to sign a contract every single, yeah, every, every single, single property yeah. you see, right? Yeah. So you can, if you, if you test drive your, your agent and you're committed to him, then you can sign a longer commitment and then they can show you multiple properties without having to sign each one. Yeah, and that's right. something that we've been doing, right? Is we've been doing, um, really encouraging our client a 30-day test drive with yeah. us. Because in the 30-day test drive, we really get to know each other 
I get to understand your needs. I get to go show you a few properties. We get to see good chemistry if we work well, if you're seeing value in me as an yeah. agent. It's really hard to see that on just on one yeah. property that you found online and then they just showed you yeah, the property, right? Definitely. The 30 day test drive is what, we, what we're typically doing. Yeah. And then from there, if we want to continue the relationship, then we can always extend it at exactly. that point, right? Exactly. Yeah. Now, the other thing you have is you have like your exclusive and non-exclusive yes. agreements. And a lot of people don't know that, right? Yeah. Um, I heard a story of like, hey, there was clients going to an open house and the agent was having everybody sign an exclusive agreement. Okay. And they didn't know that they were being locked into a contract that they couldn't get out of. Wow. Right? Wow. Yeah. So an exclusive versus non-exclusive. Exclusive means like, when you sign this for this term, you're locked in with that agent. Yeah. Unless that, unless you guys mutually cancel, the agent would have to let you cancel the agreement. Yeah. Right. And some agents may not let you. They may yeah. say, "Hey, a contract's a contract. Yeah. You got to write you're it committed. out yeah. for this time, and you technically cannot go hire another agent during that time yeah. or buy another house. Otherwise, you owe this agent a commission." Yeah. Right. And so. We don't really use yeah. exclusive agreements We're on really the buyer not. side. At least that's our plan right now because we feel like people should have the right to choose, right? Yeah, hundred percent. So we're doing the non-exclusive. So maybe talk about the non-exclusive and yeah, I mean the non-exclusive. It allows you guys as a buyer to go ahead and cancel at any time, right? So it doesn't lock you in, and it gives you that flexibility, yeah. right? Um, and and to be honest, our agents are trained to only want to work with buyers that want to work with them. Right, and I, and I think it's fair, right? If, if we're gonna to work together, we're agreeing to work together, and if for some reason it's not working out, you have every option to go ahead and cancel. So it says in the contract, this is non-exclusive. Mm -hmm. If you wanna cancel, you just have to let us know and write. That's it. Right, so I can't hold you to it, but the way I'm gonna hold you to the contract is I'm just gonna do my job. Yeah. I'm gonna provide a lot of value. I'm gonna really service you. I'm gonna do a great job as an agent, and if I am, you're not gonna to wanna to cancel with me, yeah. right? So I think it offers some guarantees and it offers some uh, and even playing and, and accountability, accountability, accountability right? for the agent, right? To actually perform, yeah. right? And, and I think you know when you have that accountability for the agent to perform, they're going to do so. Yeah, and so we're we're uh, we're utilizing the non-exclusive, and that's just a decision we made as a sales practice. Will that change in the future? Who knows? It's, yeah, it is new territories. That's another thing to mention, right? It's, yeah, a lot of this is we're still kind of seeing how it all plays how out. How it plays right? out? Yeah, I think you know just you know. Definitely interview your agent. Make sure they explain to you what the changes are. Make sure they explain to you the different type of contracts and commitments that you'll be making. And just be well well informed. Let's talk about concessions, right? Yeah. Because this applies to both the buyer and the seller, right? Yeah. So seller concessions. What are, What's an easy way to explain what a, a concession is? So a concession, if, if you're getting a concession from a seller, that means that the seller is going to give you funds to go ahead and either pay your closing costs, go ahead and pay maybe repairs, or go ahead and even pay your, your real estate agent. Yeah. So it's a right? credit in the it's, transaction. It's right? a credit, it's a credit to the buyer. So to what go would ahead. be an example? So an example would be if if you need if you need a credit for your closing costs, let's say for, for the financing, you can go ahead and request, let's say, a fifteen thousand dollar credit from the seller, and they would go ahead and you'd get that credit and you can apply it towards your closing cost. So that allows you to come in with less funds at time of close. There you go. So right? credit and concessions are kind of like the same thing, right? Yeah. Seller credit or concession is basically they're giving you something back. Now, all of that is negotiated up front, right? So when you submit your offer, you're gonna say, hey, here's my offer for a million bucks, whatever it yeah. might be, but I'm asking for $20,000 worth of concessions. Yeah. So the net offer is a million minus 20,000 is 980. 980. Yeah. But that 20,000 is a credit back, so it's being financed and rolled into the deal. Yeah. And then now you can use that credit towards whatever you need to use it for. Yeah. Whether it's to pay your agent, because now you owe them a commission yeah. with these new rules, whether it's to buy your rate down or use that for closing costs yeah. or whatever it might be. Right? And, and I, yeah, and one, one thing that I want to make sure we stand out is that everything is negotiable, right? So if if you are a buyer and you're like, hey, listen, I don't have the funds to go ahead and pay the agent. Well, you just let the agent know that up front and they will go ahead and write that in the offer asking for whatever concessions or whatever commission needs to be paid out. Now, from a seller's point of view, right? If you're the seller and you're receiving these offers, well, you're gonna have to weigh every offer out. Yeah. You're gonna say, hey, offer A is asking for a 20,000 concession. Offer B is asking for a 10,000 concession, but maybe the price is a little bit different, yeah. right? And so a practice that we now have to really focus on is to really weigh out what's the net proceeds that yes. you're getting, right? Because you may receive multiple offers, you know, especially in our our environment, 100%. Silicon Valley, and with this new these new changes, almost all of them may be offer 
asking for concessions, right? Yeah. It's going to be kind of a common practice. That's what I anticipate. Yeah. And so now we really got to crunch the numbers. Which offer is getting you the most money or has the best overall term? And I think, you know, as a seller, you also have to make sure you have your your agent push and negotiate those things, yeah. right? Especially, you know, what I've seen, you know, especially because I've worked on the lending side, I've seen a lot of listing agents just choose the highest offer. And I've worked with agents on our team where they're not just choosing the highest offer, they're actually putting these offers together and pushing the price up for our seller yeah. by negotiating with the buyer's agent. And that's what you're looking for because th this is where the negotiation skills are going to come into play when you're when you're looking to get a, a, a listing agent. Yeah, and and we do that through counter offers, through verbal, you yeah. know, negotiations and stuff like that. So it's not just hey, everybody send your offer in. It's hey, send the offers in. Now once we have the offer, there. how can we go back and really negotiate and try to bring the price as high as possible? Yeah. Right? or the terms as best as possible. And you know, honestly, what I love about the way we do it is that we also give, maybe maybe the initial offer for one of the buyers was a little lower, but then once we do a, like a multiple counter, you can see maybe that lower offer is the one that actually wins because he comes up the highest, Yeah. right? And we wouldn't have known that unless you went ahead and said that multiple counter. Yeah. And, and I think it's important to illustrate that because I think that's one of the huge values of a listing agent is able to not leave any money on the table for the seller to negotiate the highest price so they net the most. Yeah. Now, if you're a seller, should you participate in concessions? Because that's been a big talk, yeah. right, in the industry. It's like, well, some sellers may want to not offer anything, right? Yeah. Some sellers may say, hey, I understand why I should offer, right? So what are your thoughts on should sellers or uh, offer concessions and participate or even offer to pay the buyer's agent's commission? I think definitely it's going to be a case by case, right? I think it's going to boil down to the best terms, it's gonna be boiling down to the what you're gonna net the most, yeah. right? So once you look at offers, it's not just gonna be who's giving me the highest price, it's not giving me who's asking for a credit or a concession, it is what are the all, all the terms and what am I netting at the end of the day and are they satisfying all my other terms? Are they able to close in 21 days? Are they able to go ahead and remove their contingencies? So all those things are gonna come into play. So in regards to the direct question of concessions, yeah. I would say it's gonna be case by case, but be open-minded to participate in that process. By just flat out saying, I'm not gonna participate, I think you may limit yourself to yeah. the amount of offers that come in. Because we also gotta think from a marketing standpoint, right? If we list the property and we're putting out the message, hey, send me all offers, yeah. With concessions, without concessions, I'm open to all offers. Yeah. Then what that does is that drives more buyers, that drives more traffic. And what we know is that the more offers you have, the more competition is created. Yeah. And through the negotiation process, it ends up pushing yeah. the price up. And so what I would say to a seller is it, it doesn't matter if it has concessions or not. Yeah. Bring all the offers. Let's take a look at all of them. Let's weigh them all out, but let's use uh, that competition and, and the you know, all the buyers who are invested into your property, yeah. let's use that to push your price up. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, like you said, we're gonna look at what's the bottom line? What's, what's the, the bottom net? Line? And the great thing is the seller is in the driver's seat. They're in they, control. They, they, the they get to make the final decision, Yeah. right? So again, the numbers are gonna have to make sense and the terms are gonna have to make sense. Yeah, and so yeah. I think when you take a stance of like, hey, I'm not participating. You're, you're limiting yourself. Yeah, you're limiting yourself and you're potentially will cost yourself more money in the long run. 100%. If you just flat out say no, because at the end of the day, everything is negotiable yes and as long as it makes sense for you at the end of the day and you're getting the price you want and you can go from point, point a to point b and move to that yeah. next chapter like use this as a tool is yeah. what i would say 100 percent. i right? agree i agree i mean even i mean again even from a marketing you just said it from a marketing side you may want to put that in the private remarks that you guys are offering a concession yeah right because that willing may, to participate in yeah it, yeah right? so so that that's so that the other agents see that and they want to you know they want to go ahead and drive their buyers in. i think one thing to point out with concessions whether you're a buyer or seller if you're asking for a concession the seller can still counter you and say, yeah. hey, we're gonna we're gonna offer less concessions, or hey, bring your price up, yeah, and we'll still pay the concession, right? Yeah. If you really need that money to make it work, okay, we'll bring the price up to kind to, of compensate, to offset, it, yeah. to offset that, right? So that's all part of the negotiation process, it is. and that's it, is. it goes back <laughs> to why you need an agent who understands the negotiation, yes. right? and is able to, to advocate on your behalf, yeah. whether you're the buyer side or the seller side. Yeah. Now, what I would say to kind of close off is yeah. all of this is gonna be new territory. I just wanna reiterate that, yeah. right? And I wanna reiterate to whether you're a buyer, whether you're a seller, it's gonna be a case by case thing, right? And so we're gonna have to really weigh out each property 
each scenario. Yeah. Some properties may have more competition than others, which means like there may be a tighter negotiation <laughs> process for concessions. But that's how right? it always has that's been. How, it's, it's always, always been, been that right? way, right, Enrique? So yeah, I mean, it, it, I think real estate is still real estate. People are yeah. still buying and selling. But again, yeah, be educated. Make sure you have an agent that can explain it to you and break it down so that you, you know you understand. And have a, have some strategy in place, right? Like when you meet with your agent, you definitely you want to make sure you're going over all of this stuff, right? Yeah. You're, you you know what to expect, right? And you want to make sure the agent is well connected as well and is able to have those conversations yeah. with the other agent, right? Because I know that's a big benefit with us is that we've. We've been, been doing, doing this for, for so long. Yeah, we've done it. We've, we're well known within the area, so a lot of times we're able to have these intimate conversations with the other side, the other agent, yeah. and that helps make the deal and the negotiation process a lot yeah. smoother, right? Yeah. Um, and now that benefit gets passed on to to the consumer. Hundred um, percent. One more thing we forgot to yeah. touch on is really quick on the lending side. Is there anything that um, because you lead the lending side, yeah. you're licensed in that area? Is there anything that consumers need to know as far as financing? And yeah. How these, these so so, so definitely. I mean, you know, there 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 are ways where the lender can go ahead and give you a credit to go ahead and give you credit for closing costs or even credit to go ahead and compensate your agent. So definitely explore that option with your lender and they can show you different loan products that fit your scenario so that you do have the funds to go ahead and cover your closing costs. So when you sit down with your lender, it's important to say, hey, okay, I have my agent. This is what I owe them for compensation. Yeah. You know, this is my scenario. Is there a way to get that paid, right? Yep. Whether it's through the lender or through asking for a concession from the seller. Or a combination of both. Combination of combination both. Combination of both, right? right? And, and and even if if you're a if you're a buyer, understand basically understand that there are options where your your agent and your lender can go ahead and help you cover cover the, the cost. In summary, I mean I, I think this is, you know, we're not really worried, right, about this. Like we've been in the business yeah. for so long, but I can understand from a consumer standpoint when they see like hey, now I got to pay my buyer agent yeah. commission. If you really don't know how it works, that can be scary on the surface, right? Yeah. So we want to continue to bring this type of content, these types of videos where yeah. we unpack what's happening behind the scenes yeah. so that you can make better decisions and you can ultimately you know, buy and sell in the most effective way possible. Yeah, yeah. Be, educated. be educated. So if you have any questions, guys, about any specifics of your scenario, feel free to reach out to us wherever you're watching this video. We offer free consultations. We're happy to jump on the phone with you, whatever it might be, yeah. and try to get you pointed in the right direction. Yeah, sounds good. Talk soon, guys.